call this meeting of Ohio King Fiscal Court to order on this December the 14th, 2021 at 5 o'clock. Uh, I'm going to ask Jimmy Duke to lead us in a prayer and place the flag. Our Father in heaven, we're thankful for the opportunity to be here tonight to do your work and to help our community. Please be with these leaders tonight. Help them that they may make good decisions, that they may do the work that you want them to do, that we may do your will. Please be with all those that have, have, have had loss this week, all those that are going through trials now, and be with them and strengthen them, Lord, as we go now to this meeting. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Judge, do you think it would be appropriate to have a moment of silence for all the people that's lost their lives? Yes, let's do that. And we need to really be thankful for our fire departments, our EMS, and our police. They've done a great job through all this, and they need to be commended for what they've done. Absolutely. Thank you, Larry, and that's a good point. And Let's just do, let's just have a moment of silence for all the ones that lost their life and all the ones that lost everything in the in this. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna add to the certainty judge that this court's a lot of other counties lost, but we were fortunate not to have any loss of life in a while county. I think it's something to say. Right. Yes, we're so thankful for that. And as we get out and look through the uh, wreckage, it's just absolutely miraculous that uh, that uh, folks live through that. It's just, just a miracle that we, we, we are alive. We need to be thankful for the people. Some of the citizens stepped up and helped cut roads, used a chainsaw and own equipment to help. Yeah, they need to be thankful. And even some that were hurt themselves desperately was not thinking of themselves. They stepped up to help others. So that's that's kind of amazing. Brings people together. Yes, it does. I'm so proud of my county. You might want to, since we're talking about this too, do you want to, do you want to mention the, the program that was set up if people want to donate? Or is that, were you going to talk about yeah. that? Yes. Uh, uh, Miranda, can you remember that house number? Yeah, got it. I mean, the post office box. 480. 480. 408. 408. 408. Okay. Is this what you and I talked about earlier? Yes. If, if anyone wants to donate cash to the uh, uh, tornado relief, it's to go to the Beaver Dam Foundation. Uh, and it's the address on that is P.O. Box 408, Beaver Dam, Kentucky. 42320. Uh, and on there you can also include Tornado Relief. relief. Beer Dam Foundation, Tornado Relief, P.O. Box 408, Beer Dam, Kentucky, 42320. And we got that set up just today. And David is an individual that, uh, that they lost their home and didn't have any insurance. Is this who they need to contact? Uh, FEMA will be actually contacting them. Isn't that right, Charlie? Actually, was. I'm going to do a survey start tomorrow this week. The FEMA will set up shop here in the community center one day next week. Would you let me know, Charlie? Give me a phone call and let me know when it is. Yes, sir. I will call all the managers with Doug and everything else will be on Ohio County Emergency Management Facebook page. And anyone that we know will refer them to it. And then probably they'll reach out to the individuals too. But anybody we can get the information to, that's what we want to do as quickly as possible. These people have all this debris. Will FEMA pick that up for them, or? FEMA will. Look, FEMA will do that. That's what we talked about in there. The way the old night ice storm was, the individual bringing it down to the roadway, the county would take care of it and haul it off. Uh, that's the way that kind of works. If you own a house, your insurance has got to come and give stamp approval. Then, let's say if you own a house and a hundred thousand dollars, and you only got insurance for eighty, you still like the twenty. FEMA will come in and try to cover that other 20000 if everything lines up right. And that's where the individual has to register their house and go through all the red tape, so to speak, 
and register everything with FEMA to get all that started. And that's part of it. Uh, when we set up shop, they'll have to come in, individual will have to come in, register with them, and bring all their stuff with them. Charlie, you're talking about the 80-20. 80, 80, uh, that's his example. Yeah. Well, what, more or less. what if an individual didn't have any insurance whatsoever? How does FEMA look at that? They would have to produce. They didn't have insurance for the deed of the house. Then we'll go to the PBA office and get a copy of what the PBA uh, tax bill is on it. That <coughs> would be the value of what it is. So, Larry, if you got 200000 the PBA says you got a hundred. that's what's going to be a hundred. Is, is it best that uh, they... They leave the debris and everything where it's at so they can take a look at it prior to... Uh, no, because FEMA won't come out there. What we're going to be doing starting tomorrow, we'll be going around to every individual house and take the pictures and document it, put it in the site. So when they come in, they if Larry Cowan walks in there, they're going to pull up Larry Cowan on our damage survey and they'll see that. Yeah. Uh, they don't do the debris. They uh, only does the house of that. That's how they do it. So then the, the uh, property owners will reach out then on how they come to the debris. But there are many volunteers out there who want to help with that. So is there a number that they need to call for FEMA or we just need to put Well, what happened was in your the governor, let me rephrase how I just said that, Ohio County was failed to get on the list even though we was the first county in the Commonwealth to declare a state of emergency, which thank God we didn't have a fatality. Any county had fatalities moved them to the top of the list. So ours will be back on the list probably by the end of the day tomorrow. Then everybody, we will put on our Facebook page and everywhere else the number of the website and everything for them to call, for Joe Barnes to call and register FEMA, and that way they'll be registered that way. I can't register Joe Barnes. Joe Barnes has got to register. It's we, only the person whose house it's in. We have a list of people we will call. To tell them this number. So right now it's a little premature until we get put back. Right now it's premature because we was not put on that list due okay. to due to a mistake. I guess How long will it take you to take the pictures of every individual house that was affected by the tornado? Probably three days. Three days. Where are you starting at tomorrow? I'll start on in Center Town, and I'll work my way to the end because I got people coming in from Frankfurt. That's who I'll be going with to do that, provided we have nothing else happen. And the PBA can provide the information where they got a picture of that particular PBA's place. PBA's going to go with us. They're going to be in the car behind us, so they're going to have all their lists. So when I pull up and Larry Morphew's here, Larry Cowan's here, they're going to be able to pull them right there and then and have the property valuation with it. Good. So we've already worked that out. Okay. Good deal. Thank you, Charles. Thank you, Charles. Thanks, Charles. Yeah, thank you. Before you, you have... Yes. Okay. Uh, I know there's been a lot of volunteers up at our place that's already moving debris and stuff, so picture-wise, how's that going to affect or... Debris won't affect things. We, we have a lot of pictures. Yeah, I would ask anybody out here who's listening to the physical court or anything, if you got pictures on your phones or whatever, text them to my number or email them to my number. My number, I don't care put it out, it's 270-363-0861, or email it to me. That way I'll have it, but email me your address. Name and address with the pictures. Yeah. My email is OCEMA at OhioCountyKY.gov. You want to email them so they'll be big. Either which way, because I put them into their system. Texting some kind of text will really small. Okay. Hey, Judge, while we're on this subject, I just want to put out there there is, uh, especially in the first district, we have closed some county roads due to the damage. Uh, just want everybody to be aware that if you turn down a county road that has damage, there's going to be a road close sign it is illegal to go around that sign and it is also illegal to move that sign and go through it and most everywhere has got security guards posted right now so uh, i just want to put that out there that them signs are there and uh, and sam and everybody needs to be aware i cannot emphasize enough and every time i talk to the radio news i'm told the same thing if you don't live on the road you don't need to be on it the rubberneckers, I hate to say it like that, but the rubberneckers are causing us more problems than actually the storm has. Because they're out there, we can't get KU, can't get electric companies, Nick's guys can't get out there, it's state highway because the people keeps on flooding. So people who's listening to this, please, if you don't have to be on it, stay off the road. Let us do our job and get everybody back to working, so to speak. Real quick before we start this, that's Michael Sumner. He just lost his home, his family does. And, uh, you're our thoughts and prayers, Mark. Yes. Yes. Thankful your family is okay. We're feeling, 
We appreciate it. Yeah, and which road, what, which road do you live on? Utley. Uh, Utley Drive. Okay. Yeah. I'm sure, sure sorry about that. And then there's one badly de uh, destroyed on uh, uh, Barnett Station, too, that have been sort of even with you up there. That's Katie Provost's house. Yeah. Uh, Katie, uh, Newman. Newman. Works yeah. in my office. Yeah. Both of them, uh, both of them roads are closed. Uh, and, and they do have people posted. So uh, just be aware if you start to drive out there, you will end uh, in a sign and a barricade. So please be aware. Sorry, uh, we will get you that information on who to contact on whom as soon as possible. Yes, and also, uh, this foundation we just told you about, feel welcome to uh, <coughs> get it up to about the end of the week. They'll be ready on the ground roll. They're taking the funds now, but they won't be able to disperse any for a few days. Charlie has done this, I think. Judge, I need about five minutes before I go and go to the park. I uh, hate to switch modes on, I hate to get, jump out of the agenda, but we need to talk about trucks. Uh, there's no more government discounts on Dodge 2500 trucks. The only government discount we get is on 1500 Dodge special service vehicles. Uh, so we buy a truck like Nick's, like mine, or like Bo's, we're gonna be paying the same price as anybody else is. What about, is a 1500, can they be four wheel drive still? Yes, sir, they can. They are, the ones we got are. So. The ones we've got, but I'm talking about the ones with 1500. Yeah, yes. Uh, yeah, we got some 1500, about two. And that's when we started, that we made a determination to move everything to 2500 for snow plows and for the road department. But I just want to let y'all know there was no more discounts, and we was paying 32000 for a truck. Now we're looking at probably 44000 or 48000 uh, If we get diesel, it's going to go up a little bit more. Did so we, uh, Tony, did we accept bids on them? or is that We accepted bids, but what happened was Dodge Company, Cut it off. We uh, they won't let they ain't making them. They will not hold more to their bids. Uh, and we ain't the only one. The people where the sheriff bought his Dodge Durango's, he had some the same way. Polk had some the same way because I called them just to make sure, and they said the same thing. Their bids had got cut off. Well, I guess I guess my question is that uh, Mark Marietta is raising their rock rates, and and both contracts we had and we took bids and. We signed off on it. Uh, for future references, is there any need us even having contract if they're going to get out of them that easily? Are there uh, repercussions from us? Yeah, that's a Justin question. I don't know. I mean, you and can I, hold them I, to your bid. You can hold them to the bid. Yep. We can try that. I mean, and I don't know if we actually actions, but yeah, opened the bids up in court and accepted that bid for that truck. We, we took bids. We can go back and check and I give it to Justin. We can try to hold them to that bid. I mean, I'm willing to do whatever here, but. I was just talking for future reference. But just something we can ponder, or food for thought, whatever, and then later the next meeting we can. It was. Okay. Ann said it was accepted in the court, so I can get it to Justin tomorrow, and well, maybe not tomorrow, but it'll be one day this week. And we said, what we can do to hold it to the bids. Yeah, well, Mark Marietta with The Rock is the same situation. Well, for and sure we want to hold them. Uh, but now they say after the first year they're raising their rates on The Rock, including the county. Okay. Is that right, Nick? Yeah. I, don't, I don't think they can. Which bid do you need? I can <coughs> well, if I we, if, assuming that we've got the bid and accepted, I guess right, they go back and look at the paperwork. They can try. You know, I mean, they were accepted. I guess they're going to try if they, if we don't rebuttal. I say we're fighting if we can on the rock. So, with the consensus of the court, I'll get tomorrow. I'll get the bids. I'll get to Justin and see what we can do then. You know what date was off a little. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Uh, gentlemen, before you have the uh, November 30th uh, minutes. I make a motion to approve it. Motion by Sam Small. Second, Second by Larry Morphew. Uh, any discussion, corrections, or additions? Discussions, corrections, or additions on the minutes? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Before you, you have the bills, payments, payments, and transfers, including a late list. Yeah, so, motion by Larry Cannon. Second. Second by Larry Morphew. Is there any discussion? Yeah. 
<coughs> Discussion on the bill supply. I'm a note judge of length on the late list. I have it here. I looked over it anyway. I got it. You want hands? No, I've got it here at Kyle. So okay. okay. Thanks, so. sir. Further uh, discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. The bills are, uh, are approved. You have the treasurer's November financial statement. I'll make the motion we receive. Motion by Sam Small. Second. Second by Joe Barnes. Any discussion? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. We'll make a motion we, we receive the clerk's October 21 financial report. Second. You have a second? Yes, Joe second. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any discussion on that? Being none, on am say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. I'll make a motion to acknowledge the uh, clerk's November 21 financial report. Second. Motion by Jason Book, second by Sam Small. Is there any discussion? Being none, all in favor say aye. 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 Post like sign. Motion carried. We're being awful easy on best so far. Uh, what you got, I love it. Okay. Got uh, we have one more. Make a motion we don't accept. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's a good problem. Okay. If I read that. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's good. It's a good amendment. So I have motion on it. I'll make a motion on accepting the amendment to the budget. Uh, motion second. Sam Small, second to Joe Barnes. Any discussion or questions for Beth? If there's not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Take care. Uh, next we have the uh, official receipt of the sheriff's tax uh, bills. So motion for Larry Camp. Second. Second by Larry Moore, a few. Are there, is there any discussion? If there's not, I'll first say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. That motion carries. What about the sheriff's third quarter fees? I'll make a motion. We accept it. Second. Okay. Well, I get the motion to second. Okay. Uh, any discussion on that? If none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Take care. Uh, I don't see my. Anyway, we we'll want to uh, increase the amount on the bills for the uh, inmates because of inflation. And you got people out there working on the roads in different places. You got to find their a, a meal. Uh, and we haven't been able to do what we're getting. So we want to raise that to $10. It was eight. Second. Is that a day for the day? Yes. Motion for Larry County, second to Joe Barnum. All right, is there any discussion? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. That's opposed. That take care. Administrative code recommendation, Jason. So, is Ann on there? Yes. I've slept since then. Is it is it over and is it the uh, daily allowance for meals? I've got it right here. It's uh, it's coming from forty to sixty per day. Okay, the, the daily allowance on the meals. Okay. Yes, we're changing from forty to sixty. No, and we, and, uh, it was that at one time we dropped it, but we were raising it back up, and that's for all three. Yes, and, and here's the and here's the deal of uh, inflation when we get sent to a town where the, and we're having to stay in. The, downtown area and a hotel or something, it's just impossible to find it for that. Uh, Larry and I went to one little one, we almost just ordered water and, 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 uh, our, and, uh, and cookies then. 
But I don't know. So it's getting, I think you get a little carried away, but we <laughs> get, get increase. But I mean, it's just uh, it's just ridiculous what they. Uh, I'll go ahead and second that for discussion. Okay, second to Sam Small. Vote for Jason Book. Second to Sam Small. Further discussion. Uh, other than uh, I've been told by my news media that it's just temporary, so we got something good to look forward to. Inflation, I'm talking. About. Yeah, well, I don't, I don't, I think it's going to go, go. I don't think we're going to see an end to it. No, we're going to be constantly dealing with it. Uh, all favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Motion carries. Uh, we also need to uh, increase the uh, reimbursement for the county employees the CDL license. They have gone up. I'll make a motion to increase CDL license reimbursements to $40 per license and $3 for background checks due to the state increase in fees. Second. Motion by Sam Small, second by Joe Barnes to increase that to the 43 and 40 plus three. Um, any, any discussion on that? Being none, I'm to say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. That motion carried. Okay, then we're down to the inmate ankle monitors. Uh, the uh, uh, Justin, do you want to say something about that contract? What we need to approve on that? Yeah, uh, Jimmy had given me the contract. We we had originally uh, made contact with one or two entities about the ankle monitors. And this was before Jimmy came on, and, and they had sent me the contract, and it was not something I was comfortable with. And so we never did purchase those because they had some excess fees that I thought were a, a little bit too much, and didn't think the county should have to pay for that. Well, uh, we worked with another entity, or Jimmy has talked to this uh, entity here. They sent me the contract. Uh, uh, I, I, it's something that I'm willing to approve if the court is. Uh, it does allow us to get out of the contract uh, with 60 day notice at any time. Uh, we're only uh, contracted to pay for those monitors that we are actively using during a period of time and we can increase or decrease those as we see fit. So uh, it'll give us a, a, some alternatives uh, in, in, in those that uh, are to be incarcerated. So uh, we certainly need these monitors, especially in domestic situations. Uh, uh, we'd like to have those at times, um, and so, you know. You need that in the form of motion? Yes, if we could so for the judge to sign. Now, is that is that payment, are we going to, I mean, I'm looking at the I'll second thing. for discussion. Is that coming out of uh, the ARPA funds or still? So, originally this court had indicated that we could purchase uh, up to $10,000 mm -hmm. for, for, the, for the monitors based on the initial uh, contractual purchase agreement mm -hmm. that they had sent. Uh, it said 750 piece for the ankle monitors. I think it's about a thousand for the scram bracelets, which, which yeah. uh, identify the use of alcohol. Uh, this, since it's more of a lease that we need, we were, we were going to use that 10,000 that the court has allocated previously for use to those uh, as we see fit. Uh, and it comes through the ARPA program. And, and through, it comes through the ARPA, I think. Yeah, the, the, uh, Arthur, yeah. The, the yeah. motion was made by uh, Larry Morphew and seconded by Sam Small to allow the judge executive to sign the contract for the uh, monitors for the, the ankle monitors. Any there, further discussion? There is a clause in there, correct me if I'm wrong, Jimmy and Justin, but uh, we can get out of this on the 30 or 60 day notice at any point. Yeah. 60 day notice, if, if it's, unless it's default by either party, then it's 30 day. Right. Okay. And you also only pay while those monitors are in use. If you have them, it's not an issue. How does that compare, Justin, with us incarcerating people uh, and what it costs us to price here? Yeah. To like yeah. As compared to ankle monitors. I, I think the ankle monitors, Jimmy, you may have to help me with the tip, what the overall price was, but I think the overall price for the use of the ankle monitor was $5 or less. I think it may be even be $3. If you remember, Jimmy, I'm not sure. Uh, scram bracelets uh, for identification of alcohol are a little bit more, but uh, it's it's hardly anything to keep them on that monitor per day. Uh, depending on whether the individual is indigent or not, it may depend on whether we recoup some of those fees, uh, because a lot of times right now, uh, uh, 
that those individuals would have, no matter who it is, would have to pay for the. Well, the ones we got to ship out of town, we yeah. just had on our lately, has cost us quite a bit yeah. per month. It's still substantial. Still substantial. Less to do this. Perhaps a lot. Yeah, I mean, we, it, there's still a number of individuals that are incarcerated that, as a, because of a risk to others, yes. need to be incarcerated. Yeah. Uh, these are just individuals that uh, that we're going to look at to maybe have limited criminal history or ones that that we think that we can help a little bit, but monitor the well, Keeping our community safe is our number one mm -hmm. prospect. It's just a matter of uh, you know if they're non-violent, then we can, why can't we do it? Well, we don't we, choke Jason up. So yeah, we, we we deal with uh, with. Uh, uh, He's looking at some time. <laughs> they change some some. some Bond indications as far as those uh, that are uh, arrested and, and, and whether they, there's a certain uh, a risk level that they're at. Uh, us as prosecutors don't necessarily have agree how that's calculated because we think there's there's possibly more risk and the individual should stay in. But um, uh, because of the, those uh, risk levels, uh, sometimes they're released a little quicker than than I think. Uh, we wished, and so if we're going to be released, then we'd, we'd like them to be monitored. <coughs> okay. Yeah. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Uh, I'm going to move something in here that we're going to hear, but I talked to my, all, I talked to all of you on the extra show. I couldn't get in that day, uh, but I want to put up the bar, Jennifer R. Darty, and the back dated to. Uh, December 5th uh, at 1023 that's part time 22 hours a week at animal shelter attended you're filling, uh, filling part time yes. or adding in part time no filling, filling part, -time. part time we had a lady quit okay, so I think it, so, I mean, I'm good with it as far as that can we legally backdate stuff and hire them yeah I hired hire them on an executive order okay yeah, I actually told you, you know, right. March, I remember you talking about exactly order. And you could ratify any contract if it was signed accidentally something but before. Okay. So it could be ratified. I just order. want to get that out for everybody. What you did, so yeah. Right. Uh, roll call. It's a, what, yes. Hang on. I'm sorry, I choked up when I got dragged in one hand. Oh, okay. Yes. 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 Markham? Yes. Small? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Again. Barnes? Yes. Okay. Well, no, now we're ready to open the bids for the uh, uh, Long Ridge Excavator. Who has those? You have them? Yes. Bring them to Joe Barnes. He's sort of the head of the, of the uh, equipment in, uh, committee. If y'all if want to come stand behind him, help him, that's okay. I'll be right back. I don't look like you need any of This one from Boy Cat. Now, is that who we currently have it with, Joe? That's who we're bringing one through. State Trooper call I'll take you through quickly right back. Nick, Nick, this loader that we're talking about, uh, is that something we can use out there for cleanup and get people reimbursed? Well, <laughs> I've got a stock number and a year model, okay, but I don't have the uh, price, so it's on the back sheet here. Nick, you know where the price is on these? Uh, okay, let's just... It came with this, it should be... Yes. Okay, here we go. He found it. It's for how much? This is 2016. 326 long reach and it's for 141,000 even 
Neto muy bien, ya. We got another one here from CMC. Is it about the same? I don't know. He's going to read it. He hasn't even up. He's going to say the same kind of machine. Yeah, same kind of machine. We don't know. He's going to say what they, what we advertise. That's the reason I said Yeah, they advertise. This is a. This is a used 2018 link belt, 250X4. Uh, it looks like it's a comparable. Does it have any, what about the hours on it? Yeah. Um, here it is, 14, uh, one, 1,475 hours. That's on the uh, link belt. Okay. I don't know. Let me see what the phone cat. Oh, the link belt is uh, no, the CMC. Which one are you looking at now? The CMC. It's link belt. It's uh, total quote is uh, one hundred seventy-two thousand five hundred dollars. But it's higher than the, about thirty thousand already. And what's the hours on the uh, uh, cat? That's what I'm looking for. Okay. Got a lot of numbers there, but. 1475. 31,000 Yeah, price wise. Yeah. The was 41,000. Yeah. 3400. 3400 hours. On the Roy Cat? About twice yeah. the hours. But it's sure. Uh, I'm, I'm, I would have, I would it's the one that we've been renting. Well, not this. This is what we've been talking about here on the bid, uh, what we've been renting comes off of. No, it's already gone. That's off. It's already off. Yeah. But, but we wouldn't get that bag. So, so uh, I would say, uh, Joe, make a recommendation we should accept <coughs> that. I'll make a motion to accept it and we'll run it down the pipe here. Well, we've been running this one. This is the one we've been renting. We haven't had any trouble. And uh, I would make a recommendation we buy the, the 3.6 cap. You put that in motion? Yeah. I say. Motion by Joe Barnes. Second by Larry Northview. $30,000 cheaper to purchase. What did you say? $31,000 $31, cheaper. To purchase the Caterpillar Long Reach Nissan thirty four hundred one thousand. Thirty four hundred. Now you said 141000 didn't you? Yes. yes. That's the one. The yes. other one was 170 something. But look at the guys. you got to be. I'm going to be up front. I know a little bit about machinery. You're talking about what... Uh, 14, 20, you're talking about 2,000 more hours on a piece of machinery. And I know $30,000 sounds like a lot. And it is, but, there. but not on 2,000 hours. It's, I can't, I'm not going to be supportive of that. Uh, Nick may get your input, but 2,000 hours is a lot of hours on a piece of machinery. What well, was that one, 17 something? Well, one was 14.25. And the other is uh, 1475. What about the horsepower and the link uh, and the rage and all that? I don't. I, I, if, if we the link belts I've seen before did not hardly. Have well, I mean it's. Let's see, it is horsepower here. Where I think it's a 60. 60-inch bucket, 60 foot. It's a 58,900 pound machine. The link belt is. <coughs> if uh, judge, if this don't have to be a, uh, if we got some time here, why don't we uh, take some time to look over and compare each one? I don't want to get in a rush here. When well, I would recommend if we're going to look at going the link belt, then we want to, we would want to run it. You know, we'd want to. We'll see it and test it. Really? Oh, that's, that's, yeah. that's my whole point exactly. It, it, you can look at them, you and Nick can go look at them and whatever. And, uh, if, we'll and I'm, not against, I'm not against the uh, by boy the cat or by any means, but I'm just saying 2,000 hours, a lot of hours will be some cheaper. And there's the money. Here it is. Here it is. 177 uh, horsepower. I, I just got um, a text message and we watched this. 63,600 pound machine. Oh, my God. Digging death. <laughs> 
nine inches. <laughs> You're going to see that over here. That's both of them. Or, uh, you know, if we could do it like this, guys. Uh, Judge, if you or Joe or Nick, if you guys want to look at them, and I'd be agreeable to that. Uh, or you could go look at them, and uh, whichever one that you guys put your heads together, whichever one you think is the best, overall best, I would be uh, I'd be in agreement to uh, to vote on that that motion. So we table it tonight. Then. Well, not table it. I mean, Joe could rephrase his motion or he withdraw his motion. And he can look at it. Uh, they can look at it and, uh, and and come back to the court next time on our. Uh, I do feel comfortable with Nick and Joe looking at it, or himself judge and looking at it and see. I just I just want the best deal for money. But when you start start talking about a couple thousand hours on a piece of machine, right? Right. That's considerable well, difference. I know they, when we did the mini, what we did, we, you know, we yeah. tried them all so yeah. we could make sure we made a good the, decision. The, 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 the bids have been open, so we, we're qualified there. If you don't accept it, you can accept it at a later my, my, uh, meeting. Okay, but if we want to use it, utilize it during this uh, tornado situation, but why don't, Joe, if you withdraw your motion, just entertain a motion that you guys are going to look at it and, and we accept the bid on you guys' recommendation. Is that about it? We can continue to rent that one until we get this other one looked at. When, when do you think you guys, Nick, you and Joe, might take a take a look at it? Any time if they got it on site, I don't know where that machine is at. Well, uh, I don't know. They're actually local. The CMC is actually right here in Ohio County. It's shipped to in-store pickup, so I don't think they've got it on site, but we can see where it's located at. And you guys you guys may look at it and say we feel like that this is the overall best deal, and I won't have no problem with that. I just, again, why don't we do the motion in a way that if it's acceptable, that gives you and uh, Nick the choice there? And, and well, I just don't want to get into any, uh, where's Justin? He stepped out. Is he going to the person right? He'll be back. But, or we can just do it next month. We, I can write the motion to accept either bid on recommendation, recommendation of the, of the, the equipment you know, committee. And, committee. And, 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 and offer at the end to write the check month. up we to 1725 Yeah, but yeah. Uh, the only thing about this, ma'am, is we, uh, if we've already got that other machine, and if Nick and Joe decide that's our best uh, option, you're pay another month. then we can we, we don't pay another month's rent. Uh, and on the second note, we can have it out there working like on Humble Valley Road. So with that long neck, pick it up the brush or whatever the case may be. So, Joe, if you want to entertain that motion as Miranda has indicated, why? Did you have something, Nick? Uh, one of the things is we we go ahead and we hold, and we will have to rent that cat for another month. Yeah. So if if we don't do something, well, this is giving y'all the authority to decide right away. But I want y'all to go review that other one, make sure it's not a better machine. Yeah. And I don't, quite frankly, Dave, I'll be perfectly honest, I don't know the length belt from the boy cat. So, but I, I do look at the amount of hours on that. And I don't know whether they have the same engine, do they, Joe, or not? No, no length belt's its own company and Caterpillar. It's Caterpillar. Yeah. It's boy, boy cat is the company. Yeah. yeah, well, I like cats, but I, I just, again, but I'd appreciate it if you guys do that. Okay, we have the motion that will allow the, wrote the, uh, Equipment committee to make the decision, and it doesn't give you any time. Just want to make sure that you did. Call Larry and ensure that you've looked at it, and then uh, turn the bid in, let him write check. I'll second that motion. Okay, we have motion second. More, no more discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Got it done. Um, hey, wait a minute, real quick. Nick, do you want to? You got a way to contact them to find out where that this link belt is located at. Okay. Well, you can get with us after the meeting. Or he's local fellow. We need to, uh, we need to go guys. pretty quick because we're running out of days in sure. December. Yeah. Yeah. When Justin comes back in. We'll ask him if our motion is sufficient. Okay. Legal. What is? Okay. Uh, Joey, I want to apologize. I need to uh, because you might be with us a few minutes. I want to change the agenda just a little bit and bring the uh, Miss Titchener up first. Shouldn't take long and uh, talk about her request to ARPA. Thank you. And I will say that I really appreciate all you do. They 
they take a big load off of our animal shelter and home, especially in the cats. Okay. Tell us what you asked for. Um, we bought a house, well, I bought a house about two and a half years ago to try to, to move our rescue cats there and just to have 10 to 15, 20 cats adoptable, ready, spayed, neutered, ready to go. And then when the COVID hit, our 10 to 20 turned into like 60 to 80 to 100 and then and Brandy has uh, joined me in the quest here, and she has like another 20 or so. She takes the babies home and gets them ready. But the problem is, is the house I bought was, I got it for like $28,500 after all the fees and everything. It's, it was meant to be repaired. And so um, it didn't have insulation. The electric isn't up to code. Um, the plumbing is really bad. It doesn't like we can't get any water pressure on cold and um, the, In the bathroom it doesn't the water pressure that there's no water working worth a dime in there and um, it, it needs a, a few little things Overall to try to make it safe and presentable to have volunteers to come in and help um, this year we've had record numbers um, and we've started helping the dogs and puppies because the shelter has been full and FOTS has been full. We've, had, we've taken in over 60 to 65 dogs and puppies too. Um, we run a spay clinic and then we work with Dr. Renfro and so like this month, this month alone we've already spayed and neutered 40, 40 cats. Um, just took in three puppies this week. Uh, yeah, we're working on, we're working on, we go and take the puppy, like we reach people and, and take their puppies and kittens and spay the parents for um, low income or whatever the reason, if somebody just doesn't think they, they can allot the funds to spay and neuter their animal and they just repeat, uh, we, we pay for that. Um, we drive, uh, like in one day during the COVID, I drove like 23 cats just to get spayed and neutered, neutered down at Franklin Simpson and Bowling Green because none of the vets were allowed to do any spay and neuters um, with the, you know, the gloves and the personal protection and things. And um, we work our tails off, but yeah. I'm Brandy. I needed a COVID hobby, so I started rescuing cats. So here we are. Um, I don't know how familiar you are with the TNR program, Trap Neuter Return. Um, we've had many complaints about the Beaver Dam Cafe and the amount of cats that have gathered there. I recently started helping Tammy along with the spay and neuter. That's another thing that I do. I solely go out, trap feral cats, return them so they're not breeding, adding to the population. At Beaver Dam, um, uh, Keith Dale and uh, the Modern Wisdom Travis Camp, they were, they were pretty adamant that the cats were going to leave one way or the other. Um, we, we've been threatened many times. The judge has, you know, that they'll take care of them, they'll poison them, or they'll shoot them, or things like that. And um, That's just not, I mean, our county, our county's big enough to have better methods to help. And so we went in at one of Keith Dale's homes and taken like eight, don't ten, ten cats and a rabbit on that day. But, he said on the next day, you know, would not be there. So like we, we step up and we, we kind of feel the role of uh, the ACO some when the ACO can't get there and the ACO doesn't, you know, they're not supposed to be working on cats either, but we've, we've helped like during the, the beginning of the COVID, the shelter shut down. So I've taken in like a golden retriever. I mean, it's just, it's nonstop. People call us at all hours a day, but the problem is, is that um, between me begging and raising money to do the spay neuters, I cannot get the house where it's safe for visitors to come and I cannot keep handling the 70, 80 cats without help. And so that's where the judge said that y'all would receive some money and that um, for me to write something up. So it's, it's, a, it's a little, um, I promise every single penny will be stretched to the, the absolute most use. We have a lot of volunteers. It's, uh, it's just overall, that's the price if I have to pay somebody to come do it all on each category. And the judge had mentioned that 
Um, he was allowing nonprofits to ask for up to fifteen thousand, and we would we would make every single penny of that fifteen thousand go as far as possible on on making a quality rescue for the animals to, to be in to be cared for. Um, and sanctuary. And we we also help. Yeah, we have sanctuary cats now. Um, we would also love if at some point in the future any of y'all have um, a farming area, we would love to move some of the sanctuary cats out in the country um, or if there was a safe area where people wouldn't hurt them on some of the county property. But um, another thing we do, we help people. Um, I had a lady come to us and uh, her cat needed a surgery and she didn't have the funds because she'd been sick for, from the, I mean, she'd been off work because of the COVID. And so we helped her because it was like an emotional support animal. So we helped her. It was like six hundred dollars to help that cat. But she's came back and worked that money off. Like it didn't put dollars back in her pocket, but she's helped at events and went and got things for our yard sale and and whatever she could do. But we work a lot with people. Um, and like last last Friday at Fox, they we contract a vet in. We we spayed and neutered twenty three last Friday. Sometimes it's over thirty um, and. We do that twice a month, and it's an all-day work event. Like, I start at the beginning, and Brandy comes at 12:30, and I just I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Do you but have any questions for it's, these bad it's, ones? This is consistent <laughs> with what we've done for other nonprofits, um, and the request is for 15,000. Is this just a one-time 15? We we can stretch that 15,000 and get that house. Uh, a lot of, like get some people yeah, in the door. It's for a facility, Larry. It's for the facility. It wouldn't be for. We'd love to come back and show you. I'll bring pictures back and show you everything. Do you have any questions for me so I don't just babble? I mean, I can tell you all day long things we do, but. You've been doing this for a pretty good while. Though. Ten years. Ten years. Started in a. I started in a shed. You've had it. You've had the police out there a couple of times. Um, people like to start stuff and. So this last time I had it, well, first time I'd tell you this, that because Tina's rescue is called the dog house, Junior's is the dog house, I said, well, for right now, as the trophy house was next to us, we named ours the cat house. So the cop came one day and he said, I never thought it'd be in my job duty to, t to guard Jamie's cat house. <laughs> I'll make a motion if we approve this. Do I have a second? Second by Larry Count. Second by Motion by Larry Morphew, second by Larry Count. Any further discussion or questions for Miss? Is this coming from the Arthur? Yes. yes. For Miss uh, Fitchner right, or uh, Brandy? There's a list of ARPA projects on here, which is the excavator is on that. It's in here somewhere. Yeah. But now this is from the, this is from the, uh, we've got it. And I, I sent the three three years of finances, and you can see how our yeah. our need has been bigger every yeah. year. Yeah, it looks like we spend a lot in your bed. <laughs> we, we don't let anything we have go motion out. motion second. Not spayed, neutered, and immunized. Yeah. Yeah. We have motion second. Go ahead, Miranda. Go tell us. Well, we appreciate it. Yes. Cam? Yes. Morphew? Yes. Small? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Barnes? Justin, we don't mean. The money can be applied this way, right? Assuming Anna, I think Anne's reviewed that part. I, I'm assuming so. She didn't know. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think it's it's, for, it's that. facility, and they're a 501c3. Okay. As long as it's. Uh, and my understanding, like if the 504, the 503, whatever the number is. <laughs> okay. It goes back, and then if it's something falls, it divides up and goes to other 504. Yes, it does. So, yes, it does. We yes. just had that happen with the yes. county Edmondson's. Most carries. Just you're, you're taking care of it. I appreciate you guys. Yes. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. Yes, you don't care. Justin needs to add a little uh, Thank you. 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 Thank if so, he'll, he'll just need to come back to the court and just inform, inform the court of the reasons for that high acceptance of a higher bid as, as opposed right. to lower. Uh, okay. Ann must be listening because she just texts me. She said it comes out of revenue replacement. Yeah, it's part of our. Yeah. So yeah. do we need to add anything to the motion, Justin, or, or wait till <laughs> Dick and Joe looks at it and report? Well, it back depends. It's it's. Well, the one <coughs> one machine has half. Well, has two thousand less hours. Yeah, but so, it. But it's. Uh, it's hard to accept that bid without giving the reasoning for the higher bid. So in a sense, we really probably can't necessarily accept the bid 
if it's the higher amount. Well, the one we were originally going to set was the lower amount, but if the higher machine does have less hours. Yeah, so which, that, which is which is just five hours. Exactly. It, if it's just five, now I, I'd have to look to see if, if, if the acceptance of a higher bid should you give the discretion to to, to Nick by stating the reasons now, whether that would qualify, that's a good question. I think the safest thing is if he believes that the uh, higher bid is the one to accept, then he would come back and we would accept it at that time based on his reason. Something else we're, we're gonna also double check on, because I know it is important on the equipment. Like the Caterpillar, it, it, it does have a lot of hours, but we'll see what's been reworked, what's been, uh, you know. Well, we, we, our motion was to let the committee uh, evaluate, which is yeah. Nick and Joe. And, and I, I think that's what you probably need to do for now, let them evaluate if you can accept the bid at the next meeting considering their evaluation. Well, we're on a time frame here, Justin, to where we'd like to, if we, we, we wanted to accept it so we could get out there and u utilize it during the- if we roll into the next year, if we, if we roll into the next month, we're gonna have to rent another one until we, also it's also gonna be a, a, a thing about availability too. Yeah, uh, come in play. If the higher price was not available. Yeah, so- Well, I guess what you could, if you're saying that you are, if you're okay with accepting whatever Nick's uh, indications are as what he thinks is best, and that uh, he'll supplement your motion with a report as to why he believes the higher bid, if that's the one that he chooses, because you did give him up to an amount is what I saw, I think is what the motion was, up to a certain amount he can spend. Yes. So you can stay if he does, then he would need to supplement that through the... Uh, but if, if Joe and Nick, if they go with uh, Boycat, then there's no problem. Yes, it's that's correct. Higher bid because we took the lower bid, so you could go ahead and purchase it if you See, decide to go for the lower bid. When we get into the used equipment, there's a lot of it's not apple to apple, mm -hmm. so you can have one that has more hours, but you can have a lot of things that's been reworked on it, and you can, you know, where the other one might be. No, oh, I understand the reason. So, you just have to provide the reason. But again, at the same that. time, like what they pointed out, is it's got almost double the hours, so well, we do need to make sure that the thirty thousand dollars wouldn't be worth. The extra yeah. spin towards the half the many hours on the machine. Yes. Yeah. Well, I, I think since all the, the, the statements that you've made as far as why you might, why you and Nick, if you reviewed it, accept the higher bid. Yeah. And that's probably it's all on the record. It'd be the reason why you're, you're probably okay because you gave him up to a certain amount. Yeah, we're just going to have to dig into it more. But if we don't have to, and we can make a decision, as once we find all the stuff out, we we might be able to save us another month's rent to another machine that we might not end up purchasing. So we just yeah. well, then I think you'll be fine. I think you'll be fine. You've stated the reasons here. If we need to ratify it, uh, the next meeting, we can. That you could probably go up and spend up to that amount. Sorry, Jordan. We'll do it. Hey, hey, yeah, can so you fix the microphone? I think it's oh, no. it did its own thing. <laughs> okay, you're up. Joe okay. just going to address you. So I have a whole packet of stuff for you guys to look at, but I'm going to try to take up as little time as possible <clears throat> just really quickly so that you guys don't go through there and think I'm asking for the moon and stars. We did request the uh, ARPA funds, the remaining ARPA funds to be allocated to the project of the power expansion. So what I'm asking for is in trade for the money you would have put in for the for the power expansion that our, that the RDAP funds are going to pay for. If I'm saying RPA, I meant RDAP, so the TVA funds. Yeah. So um, we have Ryan Drain here with us. Ryan is coming to us from Maysville today, so I just want everybody to recognize that he has left a devastated area and come up here to present to you guys for this project. Um, that's the first page of your packet. So I will, I'll go ahead and let Ryan talk about this, this one project. Judge Court, thank you all very much for uh, letting me have a moment to speak this this evening. Um, Before we get started, you, your family, everybody okay? Yeah, yeah. Thank you for asking. Yeah, miss Mrs. by less than a mile, so we. Uh, but we're very fortunate. Very fortunate. Thank you. For we're that. sorry about the the community. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Um, much like all the communities in West Kentucky, we can all certainly use the prayers and hard work of people for a long time. So. Um, Moving on to uh, the proposal that you'll see, uh, essentially what we're proposing to do is come in 
and complete an economic development one-on-one -on -one training um, and that would be for uh, Jody's board and whoever she delegate to uh, attend that training. We cover a lot of different topics on that, um, in that training, defining the economic development of a rural community. And just to take a step back from that, um, I served on the board of Graves County Economic Development for four years and then I was the president of Graves County Economic Development for seven years prior to my role at uh, Momentum Group Consulting. So I've got over a decade of experience, not just in economic development, but in rural economic development in Kentucky. Um, we talk about the roles of the practitioner, uh, responsibilities of a board member, how you, you establish project teams and work through projects uh, so you can accomplish more and more wins, property development, uh, how to operate the organization effectively through committees, uh, winning and losing projects and how you deal with that, because uh, that can be extremely rewarding, extremely challenging either way. And then we talk about uh, why dynamic planning is vital to a community's success. So this is kind of a crash course, it's a couple hour crash course um, into some of the higher level things with economic development. Um, and then we go into an eight hour session, uh, uh, another day, um, in dynamic planning, which um, we've actually coined that phrase, and a lot of people would probably refer to it as strategic planning, but there's some things that we do specifically different that I implemented as an economic developer that I think um, specifically apply to communities, especially rural communities, and getting a plan rolled out and actually action taken on it. Uh, we go through a vision casting uh, segment. We look at and develop a mission statement or update a mission statement. We complete a SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. We do something different. Uh, we look at unique attributes of the community. So how you're gonna tell your story when site selectors come in, uh, when you have companies that take a look at your community. What unique characteristics that make your community uh, different? What are those? Um, then we go in and we establish top priorities for the plan period. So and we'll also set goals. So we'll set some long-term goals, short-term goals, but then we'll establish priorities within a 12-month period, okay? Uh, and then after we establish what our priorities look like, we take a look at specific actions under each one of those priorities. And each action has a person or a group assigned to it. It has a uh, timeline of when you're going to start that action and finish. It's got budgetary um, items added to it, and then how we evaluate each one of those things. So we really take it a step deeper than the typical strategic planning process where you're just identifying goals and priorities. We actually are very action focused. So when the plan is created, um, everyone that reads the plan, that's involved in the planning process will know over that 12 month period, exactly what actions are to be taken, who's responsible for those, when they're gonna be done, how much they may cost, and then what's our expected outcome. Because the reason why most strategic plans do not work and why they fail or they're never started to begin with is because I don't believe that they're defined enough and it's hard to hold uh, people accountable when they're very vague. So that's what we're all about and, and Jody was really um, interested in that piece of it. Another thing that we do is we develop a communication plan with, and we, we actually specifically uh, place dates and timelines as to when um, she may update her board or come update you all or the community as to the progress of the plan. So there's additional accountability built in there. And then on a monthly basis, I'll have a discussion with her about the plan and make sure that you know it's it's progressing uh, as it should and another thing about the dynamic planning process is through the communication piece of it it allows those priorities to potentially change uh, throughout the year should there be a new opportunity come up should something unexpected happen um, should there be a, a disaster that you've got to change and reprioritize things uh, it allows you to do that so the plan doesn't wither on the vine. It's not a house of cards. You can change because as you guys know, the, the world's changing, businesses change very quickly. 
and the days of setting up a plan that's five years down the road and us thinking things are going to be exactly the same it's so many years down the road it just doesn't work like that anymore so we've really uh, worked hard to develop this plan this is something that i utilized uh, during my tenure at Grace County Economic Development and uh, was, was extremely successful with it. Any specific questions? So I would like to add to uh, what Ryan is saying. So I reached out to Ryan uh, about his strategic plan because he is from Kentucky and we've been talking about doing a strategic plan for economic development for over a year now. Um, and we wanted to do it internally, but we realized after trying to start that process several times that it's really difficult for us to do our own internally because the feedback that we're getting is going to be um, probably watered down because of personal relationships with our board members, with you guys, with other members of the community, misunderstandings about economic development, what it's really here for. So we really needed to get an outside person to do it, but it's really expensive usually to do it. It's, it's usually $20,000 or more and that's just a minimum. Um, and Ryan is, is not uh, looking at trying to get rich off of this. He's just trying to do a good job of, of developing uh, rural Kentucky with strategic planning. So we, we all work in silos. That's been a problem that I've said since I, I got in this, uh, in this role. And I really want this plan to pull together our team as a one unit, realizing and understanding what it is that we're trying to do with economic development what industries we're good for, why we would go after certain ones, why we would develop properties the way we do, why we're looking at workforce the way we do, why we tell our story the way we do, and get everybody on that same page so that we all understand and we're, we're walking lockstep. So that's the reason behind this project. I also want to say that before we do the strategic planning process, all of the members that are involved in the process, I call them and we have a one-on-one -on -one brief one-on-one -on -one conversation about um, you know their goals thoughts and ideas as well and all that's confidential but we work that out through the process so his price for this um, and I'll get to the all of it together on the last page but for this one it would be uh, $7,500 it's usually $14,000 for his but um, he does discount us if we do it before December 31st to $7,500 in addition, KU and LG&E have allocated $2,500 to this project specifically. So they say if we use uh, this this strategic plan, that they will uh, they will give us $2,500 to do this. Fees or your total? Huh? Fees? Did you say total? The total, total was $7,500. No, the $2,500. It's total. just for total. the strategic plan. So $2,500. Yes. Okay. Yes. okay uh, We're what, Joe? Would be at five thousand. Did. Uh, Who's giving 20, who's giving 20, KU? KU, LG&E. It's the same. One company, yeah. yeah. I, I heard two things, and yeah. I was thinking maybe we could get 2500 2500 Oh, yeah. okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah. And we were only going to be out of 2500 Okay, uh, yeah. is, oh, see the board's heard this too, right? Uh, several times. Okay. Yeah, many, many times we've talked about strategic planning. Uh, Sam, you're on the OC, the board's a good deal? I'll make the room. Okay, you will make a motion? I do. I'll make a move. I'll see. Where is the, where's the funding for this coming? Is it going to come from it will be, ARPA? Out of, we, we've got money in the uh, OC the budget, but we're going to ask for it from the RDAP funds. Isn't oh, that correct? Okay. No. We asked for all of the rest of the RDAP funds to pay for the fiscal courts allocation Part, to oh, the I'm power sorry. expansion. Yeah, I got you. Okay. And in trade, I'm asking the fiscal court to pay for our projects that we would have asked it would for come the from, RDAP funds. Uh, it would come yes. from the ARPA uh, loss revenue. Okay. So we got a motion and a second. Motion for Sam Paul, second Joe Bonds. Ryan, did you have pretty good uh, success as the economic development uh, in Grays County? Uh, in the, the seven years the director we announced 40 projects, over 1,900 full-time jobs, 300 million investment. Um, my last full year, Site Selection Magazine named us the uh, number four micropolitan in the U.S. for projects, which is basically cities and communities under 50,000 population. So we did. We we had we had great success, and um, you know, not one person does it by themselves. So. 
and I tell everybody I didn't. I only created one job when I was there because <laughs> uh, I explained to my staff I was one person. But we had a lot of businesses and uh, community partners and our core and other elected officials that were bought into the planning process, and that's what made it work. Yeah. Well, you understand the reason for my question. Absolutely. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you. Also, Thank you. Uh, Ryan just completed uh, or started this process with Breckenridge County, so if you guys yeah, we just talk did theirs last week. Okay. okay. Um, actually, I uh, Oh, like that. And Jody, you said you wanted to talk with them just for a minute. In oh, I'm not done. <laughs> okay, I thought you wanted to both say. I do, but I'm not done here yet. So that was just one of the things. Okay. So GSLI, um, if you guys remember, we used to have lead generation that we did internally. Um, we had that for one year. Um, just whenever we started getting going with that, uh, you know, the RDAP fund system changed. All those things changed and we, we lost our lead generation. Um, we're asking to, uh, to recoup that lead generation now with a different company, um, GSLI. And the reason why we're, we want to switch companies um, and do it a little bit different this time is because this company actually has the ability for us to submit RFIs directly through the site. So uh, they will send us leads just like we got before, um, only more of them. And then we can use their site to directly submit RFIs through there. And they allocate a project manager directly to us. So just like we have a whole group of state project managers and all of those projects get blasted out to the entire state, we would have an allocated project manager at GSLI just for Ohio County. There's no other county in the state of Kentucky right now that uses this system. So we would be the only site submitted for all of the clients of GSLI and everyone in this system. We also would get face-to-face -face time with every CEO of every company that we wanted to submit, um, submit RFIs to, rather than having to pay for individual meetings and having to fly out to California or Toronto or wherever. Um, if we got the project and if they actually considered our RFI, we get to meet with them before we submit the RFI and ask them any questions that we have and we don't have to pay any extra for that. So that makes this program really, really unique for us and would help us to stand out and attract those projects that we want um, to our property without having to compete with everybody under the sun. So that's my technical term for the population that we have to compete with. So that's what GSLI is. Um, you guys do have a lot of information about it in front of you, but I'm not gonna go through that because you can look at it and I don't want to waste your time. But basically that's the reason why I'm asking for GSLI and the lead generation is because we had it before. We lost it whenever we didn't have the RDAP funds to pay for it any longer. Now we want to trade those RDAP funds that we put for the power expansion also for our lead generation back using this system. So the GSLI is the membership? Yes. Now when would that membership Start. I mean, it's got this 12 is, months here. Yeah, it, it would start immediately. As soon as we paid for it, it would start that day. Okay, so they don't have like a certain. Actually, it's already started. <laughs> They've given me a trial period while we wait to see if you guys would fund it, um, which is, it, it's been really, really good. They actually have gave me a free lead, so I get to submit an RFI to someone for free even before we start paying for it. So it's immediate. Now, how much is it? Fourteen thousand nine hundred dollars. They also will run ads directly for us um, through the, their own website, through their own lead generation system, to our target industries um, and to those companies before we ever even submit RFIs. They'll also send us twenty-five hundred a year of our target industry uh, directly to us, so that we don't have to search for them. So there's. There's a lot of benefits, but that's all in the, that information. If you guys have any questions or if you want me to go over it more, I will. I just don't want to waste your time. So the, I've got a couple different prices here. Yeah, the discounted price is total for all of it is fourteen thousand nine hundred. The original price total for all of it twenty one thousand. Based on the fact that we um, are a, a lower population rural area and they have no properties in Kentucky, they reduced it. We got a twenty one. Or an eighteen thousand dollar discount. What? What's the associate's got? Momentum group. Is that where you're going too far? That's right. 
Okay. Here we get another one. GSLI. Dog and shovel and placer AL. Yes. So you're looking at GSLI right now. Yes. So we're not looking at the forty-five thousand five hundred. No. That's the total for everything that I'm talking about today. Okay. Yeah. So How GSLI much? is fourteen thousand nine hundred dollars. How much trouble would it be to get a copy of the last four years of the jobs that y'all have created and paid? I've asked for it before and I still haven't got it. No, I brought it to you last year. No, you never. Not to me. I gave it to all. I gave that list to all of you guys whenever I did the the update last year. The people Do, does anybody else remember that? Yeah, yeah. You guys got that last year. Yeah, yeah, I got it there, but, and I looked it over. Uh, and I know this is somewhat, it's been several years and this is somewhat of an empathy of it, but, but I'd certainly like to, I'd like to see some, I suppose, more results of the uh, factory point or whatever the case may be. And I know we, we put money into OCEDA, put money into OCEDA, and I want to, I want it to be the first one, I want to be the first one on the bus to make it work. Yeah. But but I also want to see some results at the end of the day. And there was some on that report that you give. Yes. But uh, we as a court have to look at the financial end as, and, and that's what I look at on anything. So. Right. So yeah, you uh, should over for you to make me one, I don't remember getting it. No, I'll, I will make you another one and there's gonna be more to it now because we've had several other WPT expansions. We've, we're expanding Dunway Timber. We've had the National Office Furniture expansion. So there's been other expansions since then. We also had a mine closure uh, since then, and we've also had a downsizing of, of dice sales since then, so I don't know how that's gonna weigh out, but I, I will definitely get those numbers to you again. I, I know Jody all been handicapped from, from just pure fact that electricity's not been out there in industrial. Mm -hmm. you know, I understand that's a major Handicap when you start looking for the street or right. places to locate out there. So, yeah. Uh, I, I just and, and I'm not saying you're not. I just I just I just like to see progress. Yeah. So yeah. Me too. We're trying to do some things too to try to make it uh, that uh, part more uh, we, available. To me. Sure. And I think we right. jumped ahead on you. Yeah, we did. I, I, we're just kind of. I'm sorry. We did. We did. No, it's fine. Um, so. Yeah. Price. yeah. So. So another thing to consider with the lead generation is that right now, you know, you guys know because I've talked to you about it in closed session, but most of the project leads that we're getting are asking for an amount of power that we can't even conceive for at least five or six years. We can't get them that. And so we're, we're not going to land those projects until we find a solution to that problem. And that's been almost every project lead that we've gotten. So with our own lead generation, we have control over that. While we sit and wait for people to send us leads, we don't have control over that. We're getting what they send us. When they send it to us, we don't have the utilities to support it. We can't land the project, and then we're just spinning wheels. They have known that the ARPA money is just, we couldn't use it to push the electricity out there quicker, faster. Well, pace. well we're, we're, that's, a, that's an option. We're, we're looking at the grants first. Yeah, I know the grants first. I know she's handicapped by it, but if there's anything this court can do to push that, in, all we're all we're doing right now for that one expansion that, that you guys exactly are talking about, right but now. the expansion this that you guys are going to pay for is, is waiting to side. find out if we to did get that grant. Okay, but yeah. we're working yeah. on grants as recently as we can move on that. Do you have to make any idea when we'll find that out? Well, they already did the site visit with us, and I don't remember the date on that, but they did do the site visit with us, and. I'm expecting to know any day now um, how we panned out with that. But you think if we do get that, it'll still be five or six years before it gets installed? No. Okay. Not for that expansion. For the 9.5 megawatts, we're looking at five to six months maximum from the start to finish up the project. Okay. So that will be helpful. Okay. But again, the projects that we're seeing are 40, 50 to 100 megawatts or more, and, and we're and not going to get those That would projects. get anything uh, like another die sale or something. And, uh, or maybe we can do that. And I think you're going to tell them about one that might not be a power issue. 
I, I think we're going to be happier in a minute whenever I go to close well, session. So but regardless, how about that? Yeah. Uh, Sorry, we we jumped yeah, in that, on front. Joe, why did you do that? You hit it up. You kept, I was looking at the paper. Read the head. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. I'm lead generation when we funded that before. We never did use it, did we? We did use it. Yes, we did use it. But we had just, it takes a long time for, it took a long time for us to learn how to do the lead generation ourselves because we were not allowed to use RDAP funds to hire consultants. That was one of the rules. You couldn't use it to hire consultants. So then we had to take a course to learn how to do our own follow-ups with the companies, how to, how to vet the companies and do all of those things. By the time we got through that and we really started diving in and being able to, to use the system like it was supposed to be used, the RDAP funds were changed and we could no longer uh, get our <coughs> generation. So. Uh, now, did we, uh, would this qualify for the RDAP to take to the uh, take to the IDA board? We've already, we've already allocated all of the RDAP funds uh, to the power the expansion project. project. Power yes. So you guys, what you are going to pay for the power expansion project is usually the money, or the RDAP funds is usually the money I would have used to do this without having to come to you guys in the first place. Yeah. But we're That's trading it. Right. With the, right. With the uh, start right. trade now. So we can huh? use our start start money. Start trade now. Yeah. Yeah. But Maybe. It's, it's created yeah. from this fund, <laughs> the electric fund. Yeah, and the quicker the better. And I know yeah. Joe has been working on it. <coughs> you're looking for you're looking for. I do believe the quicker we get the power out there, the better off everybody. Absolutely. It's, uh, yeah. it's a, uh, that's the last money you're going to last for the night, right? No. We that's better give, the you better point. give them the whole package then before they make you motion. The website maintenance, which we also used the RDAP funds for up until the point where we could not use the RDAP funds for that any longer, which is why we signed the contract in the first place. Um, I don't know how that's being paid now, but if it is being taken out of our budget, we also are not going to be able to afford that long term based on what the court budget says. That was never the plan for maintaining that website. It was always to use the RDAP funds to maintain that website. So I'm asking that again in trade, and the total amount here is in trade for the $82,000 roughly that we are using RDAP funds to put into the power expansion project. So of that $82,000, I'm asking you in trade for 43 or something. So the website maintenance is something that we have been paying ongoingly. Um, I'm just not sure where the court is having it come from now. I want to make sure that that is not coming out of our regular budget, which would put us over budget because we never plan to use our budget to pay for that maintenance. We always planned our net funds. Yeah, now the, the 5000 that we already voted and committed, is it part of the 43? Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. So and the same one you award the one they award on the, the website the same thing we've been paying just I just want to make sure that Where's you know that that's right? in the budget that's and not question. taken out of our yeah, own I'm, I'm texting to see that's an answer question I don't know exactly which fund is coming out of right yeah okay I want to make sure it's still on I want to make sure that it's not coming out of our budget and it's allocated from the money that we're asking for now as a special project. Yes. And then Placer AI is the last one um, that we have on here uh, as far as your packet goes. If you turn to page four of six, if I can find it. Say four and six. Four, four and six. six. Yeah. So it's going to look like this. This is a system that basically does uh, gap analysis continuously for us for small business or events or anything that we do where we, we need to see what the population is that we pull in by um, our businesses, what best businesses to put into our, our buildings or our shopping centers. Um, who we need to be recruiting as far as small business. It also will tell us if we have a concert or an event, where those people are coming from, where they're going to afterwards, how, or where they're shopping, if they are shopping, where they're staying, 
um, where where they live, so where they're coming from as far as, as commuting in. Um, it's a system that gives us a ton of data that will help us with uh, economic analysis of, of hosting things, of putting money into things, and help us to uh, understand what businesses would work in Ohio County best, what wouldn't, um, why, where the competition is, et cetera, et cetera, <coughs> where you should market to. It's a ton of information. It's basically the information that, if you put it into perspective, that Beaver Dam did whenever they got the gap analysis, only it's all the time that we have access to 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So that's what Placer AI is in a nutshell. If you guys have any questions about that, you can ask. It, is that something, speaking of Beaver Dam, is that something, I mean, because they could probably use this analysis too, was there? Our, all of Ohio County will be able to use it anytime they want to. Like, that, if they want to know, if they have sounds on second or whatever, and they want to know all the data that's associated with that, I can give it to them. I can even give it to them going two, three years back if they want to see, you know, what a certain concert brought into the county or where those people came from or went to or where they shopped or stayed. We can give them all that information. So that's what the system is. Now, the, the, yeah, on these prices, is that a year price? Yes, all of this is for, all, all the prices that you see there are for 12 months, it's, a year. And is that going to be the same price every year after that? I'm sure it will be, yeah. Uh, but we have, a, it, it would be a one-year contract, so. 14,000. Yeah. So the total amount uh, was 45549 and of course with KU Investments, 2500 um, leaving $43,049.92 out of the $82,000 uh, remaining RDAP funds that we traded for the power expansion. So that's what I'm asking for in total. You yeah, guys can meet me up. Yeah. And the website, we probably already have it. So we're still looking for $38,000. I think so. A little bit at $38,000 I think it would come from so the that, hey, that that would be place you got a 35 or right. Right. That's we could get it from the, <coughs> the golden shovel that's already is that in the budget already yeah. that's the 80. from the ARPA golden shovel is not in the budget. Do we know that for sure none yeah. of those yeah. were yeah. in the budget yeah. no. <coughs> good thing is any of those so this was things we that we would have used we'll our debt funds for of course, we got to look at and whenever we well, sign with next time we'll see the budget of what's left. Though, anticipate using our funds for that. The other side of the community, this is their projects that we have, that that's the one that's put up for our own to see if it's exactly. the actual left. The actual this, total left is $35,549. Correct. Or did that? Who's big question for you? If we get the grant for the fire expansion, then we'll use our debt funds. If we don't get it, will we be using those our debt funds? Well, I don't know because everything that I've requested has been denied, so I have no idea. Um, what what's been denied? Really everything. What? And everything I've requested through through RDAP funds has been denied except for expanding the power. So. But I think if if the power was gotten some other way, I think it sure it would be talked about. So the remaining total was $35,549.92. Uh -oh, 75 from 43 is something. Uh-oh, 75 from 43 is $35,549 in my calculator. I thought the five come out of 43 something. It did. It was like $2,500 that they had. They were already good get out, so it's 75 out of the 43. Seventy-five. Uh, What's your pleasure? And this is this is going to be something every year. Is about what this is going to run. Well, if we uh, if we want to do it again next year, then yeah, I mean we would have to do a new contract with them and look and relook at it next year. This is for one year. This is one year projects. Okay. I will say, Jody, I will get, I will give you a year, and then when I come back, uh, we'll look at it. Okay. And I'm not going to guarantee my vote on the second. Okay. Um, I don't expect you to. Uh, motion. motion to Sam Smile. $35,549.92. Second by Larry Kennedy. Right. Any further discussion? Being done, 
All in favor say aye. Yeah, this is so much money. Should we have a roll call vote on this? Yeah, let's roll call it around. And Johnson. this this is yeah. a trade off the one year time for the. Kim? Yes. Morphew? No. Small? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Uh, okay. go to the uh, we want a very, a very short, listen to these, very short closed session for Jody to give you something we hope you can know. But now, can let me go back to this. Next year, tell Jody. But, but we're going to wait just a second because, uh, like, uh, like uh, Joe says, in case somebody's waiting on these other things, we have the, the ARPA resolution. Uh, number 20 uh, that some projects this year have already looked at. Well, some of them have voted on tonight. Some of them have already been voted on tonight, but this will be in form of a resolution. Is this, is this the the, uh, projects? I didn't get a copy of that. Was it in my folder? It's, it's yes, on the packet. Back, back. Last page, I think. Yes, it's your last staple piece. Jason Bullock. Like I said, these are all projects you have already approved. Just got to put them in the form of a uh, resolution. Any further discussion? Um, just bear with us, Judge. The one, you know, we might need to look at that road department one. It says 141, and we might adjust that to approve it too. Up I thought to. the uh, I thought the food pantry wasn't that much. I thought it just turned out it was a freezer. That we talked about. That's what they. That's all they talked about. But all those other things add up to. They just spoke on the preacher. Now he. Well, if we proved it this Larry and we paid the other, we'll have to pay for another resolution. Here's a copy of the pantry. But some of that we've already. But like we have proved it. Well, I've mentioned earlier, but they're paying boys and folks hundred thousand uh, dollars. Expenses were at one hundred thirteen three forty six based on your last request. From the last court meeting, last court meeting, uh, that was the question they made right there. <clears throat> We've already approved some. Well, all of them actually. Well, tonight, except the kitty cat thing, we did it tonight. The rest yeah, of the people already approved these. So I can't we're voting on. They have to be in the form of a resolution. Okay, no. judge. I thought there was more fire departments put in than this is one of the two. We, we haven't approved the others yet. That These was, are all stuff we've already approved. That was just a training center at 22000 Can I ask uh, how we come about these? Uh, I mean, who was over, who was dictating that we give $100,000 to the Cliff Hagen Boy Club Club? We all they, did in committee meetings. Well, they came and they came to us. They, 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 they come and asked for that. that. I don't know if we. We, we didn't know. dictate. They just come to us and ask. So we asked for a hundred thousand dollars. We just uh, promptly going to give it to them. Yeah. Well, they they came and. I know. Well, I was yeah. here, Jason. I was here. I was here. Yeah, I know. And, and I, I, I question, we and that's your vote, good. yes or no? Yeah, I mean, no. That's. Uh, well. Uh, Actually, I just, I just think, I was thinking, it was 10, I was just thinking, 
money's like that could be utilized in Ohio County in a lot better than Well, and I think that the way they're trying to do it is, you know, we're looking at things, yeah, it could be utilized as roads, but I do think some of these roads, projects. I'm talking about other things as well. Not just I know, I'm talking roads. about this but could be, that, this that is, is used for kids county, that though. have places to go safely after school for several hours. It that, is. That they're not at home by themselves while their parents don't work there or something like that. I mean, we looked at that as kind of. Yeah, and that should be parents' job, I would think. But well, I just don't know. I'm going to find it difficult that uh, <coughs> the pantry, people eating, stuff like that, I don't have a problem with. Tom Care, we, we agreed on that. Uh, yeah, I just thought when they came and presented on the pantry, they, they, they just was asking for the. Well, I think he was misunderstanding. He remember that list I showed you of all those things he yeah, wanted. Yeah, but there. I thought it then they backed up and said they only needed the freezer. That was that's their main thing they want right now. And that has to be bid. That's why I think that's why he was asking for that because nothing else is, has to be bid. That's the project has to be bid on that. Yeah. It wasn't just a freezer part of the building. And I don't know about the Boys and Girls Club because they ask, you're on the board, is it is it a one-time or is it over a three-year period? A certain amount each. I, I think from my understanding. Yeah, it would, would be in one-time, I mean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think what they, what they tried to do uh, is try to do one year's budget. Yeah. To at least make it another year. Yeah. Is what? Yeah, I mean, uh, really, it, it was... It was a hundred thousand dollar ask. That's just, and there, I think you all had more than one. And essentially, what it would be going for is a one year, one year of operation is about one hundred thirteen thousand yeah. dollars. So I mean, that's a year. Uh, whatever. The way the Boys and Girls Club works is they we had to get three years of operating costs. Up front. And I think you had three hundred sixty. So you got raised that almost. In, in perpetuity. Yeah we're always going to be generating funds to operate from here until the world ends <laughs> that's what we're going to be doing and if you all give us uh, uh our gracious enough to give us our thousand dollars we're we've got another year i mean that's that's just and then we'll we'll just keep moving forward well one just speaking for the committee we, you know you guys came and asked for us but i think one way we kind of looked at the funds is with arpa money mm -hmm. is that ways to help people get back to work ways to help people in because of inflation and stuff like that this is ways we don't normally can help people but this is to help people get back into jobs with their children because daycare and, and all that's high food's high so we're looking at ways we could put money into the community to help people get back on their feet and get going because i think that's what i think that's what a lot of this funding was for and, and that's on the community side there community that side. means they're, they're focused they're they're uh, earmark for this we, type of thing we can't use these for what the we're replacement using. money can be used for other things like right. that. But this is from community projects and being proved that way that it has to go for these type of things it can't go for anything else. it has to go for that type of thing my question is like kids in center town and joe's district and horse breaks in mind will it benefit those people yes well, right now, I will, I'm just going to assume it. Right now, I do think they're working on busing issues. There is busing for every school, except, except maybe for Western and Southern. Western, or, or Western, Western, Western Horse Western Branch. And Horse Branch. They're working on that. And what this is, it's a dollar a month per kid, and the school system's working on busing the kids. But there is right now at Western. I, I will North. say, uh, I think you were at the last meeting. There are, the Boys and Girls Club is a machine. We, we There are people that are advocating. The, at a state level, there's a yeah. bunch of money that the governor has discretion over, and there is a chance that the Hagen Boys and Girls Club could get enough money so that we could potentially purchase a van. And if we have that, then even if for some reason that the bus situation doesn't work out, we can go that route and do it ourselves, because that's what that's what they do over in Orangeboro. So it's. It's a const. It's just constant. We're we're at this point. Uh, we're really getting started, and things are just going to going to progress and get better. I mean, we even talked about some pretty pie in the sky, way down the road, you know, type of things in the last meeting uh, that are just you know. You think about it now, and you think, whoo, it's it's a big it's a big deal. But at the same time. We just pulled together three hundred thousand dollars so we could open it. Yeah, you scope the things. How many kids would you talk, or are we talking about? Right now, uh, we have 
they they have I thought oh it'd just be jumping up you know just quick but they they have noticed every time they've opened a new a new facility that right now I think there are around 60 or 65 signed up and about 45 to 50 attend each day now we have a capacity with COVID and all that other stuff right now at about 75 now if you're familiar with the construction that is happening over at the vocational school the render center the alternative learning at the render center is going to be housed at the vocational school uh, and then they're building that auxiliary gym in front of it but that's in here or there so whenever they move out of the render center then the boys and girls club will have the run of the entire facility so at that point uh, we think that our maximum capacity to actually house the kids when they're there is about 110 or 120 but that was just with half of the building so moving forward whenever we have the whole building then that that changes things and I, I don't even know uh, what that would be what we got to that what's, point. What's what's the, what kind of kids what kind of what kids are we looking at uh, well I mean it, it, it's in terms of capacity anybody any any child is eligible from 6 to 18 and the service you provide is what it is I mean it's it's a place for them to play it's a place for them to do homework they do uh, drugs and alcohol programming they I mean just about anything you would want but the main thing is it is it's not just it's not daycare I mean they're getting help with their homework uh, they're they're you know uh, if they have to try to catch up in classes that can that can be done there too if there, there was gymnasium. anybody hmm? gymnasium also yeah there's a gymnasium there they have uh, rooms with games that they can play and uh, there's cafeteria there and they'll get a snack uh, after school and uh, moving forward like if there if there was anybody that you you know really you could say I want there to be a music program there and I'm going to give you twenty thousand dollars to start a music program that they have one right they'll do it so quite literally as you go forward any type of program that anybody would want there are certain ones that they they do like like I was saying the drugs and alcohol and things like that there's a smart moves program uh, so they have all kinds of programs that they run anyway uh, but moving forward anytime that anyone ever had some money that they wanted to go toward like a an agricultural program they, they, they would do it and they would keep track of it. that that's the thing that they do every kid that goes to the boys and girls club they keep track of it they know what programs they're doing uh, and they keep data on it because it goes back to the national boys and girls club to make sure uh, maybe if they're thinking about getting other programs to come in to help these kids out uh, it's 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 an amazing system that that goes along with it from a national level uh, there isn't any question that you can't ask them that they don't have a solution for oh we did this because of that and we've seen this over over time so it's it, it's something else and it's twelve it's twelve dollars a year if you if your kid wants to go that's it it's twelve bucks how many people is of salary the book that uh, I think there's one full-time which is the unit director and there might be I want to say at any one time there might be five or six in the building but we're only open from 2 30 to 6 30. so uh, there might be six or seven part-time yeah. employees uh, which they, they usually tend to be uh, like uh, college age kids that are that are looking to get into teaching or, or some sort of youth development or whatever uh, and that that's usually the, the type of person that, that uh, they hire and, and, and listen, I know this is a lot of money, but I, I, it's just kind of one of these things where money like this, for stuff like this, has been thrown to us, and I think it's kind of once in a lifetime type of money mm -hmm. that we're yeah. not gonna. And this, that we probably would be able to help these organizations. Right. And this, this is limited to these type of operations, these type of programs. Well, this, this part of the budget. In terms, of, in terms of what the Boys and Girls Club qualifies for, for the ARPA funds, uh, there was a chart of. Of, I think a half a dozen different ways or actually I think there's about a dozen different ways and there are six different ways that the boys and girls club qualifies through LARPA funds that that came down from the 
national organization because when it all went out, they just told everybody, here's how, you know, here's how you do it. Yeah. And typically with the way that uh, Cliff Hagen Boys and Girls Club does, and I think most, most in every city operate, is they will go to their, the communities they serve every year and give them opportunity to help. As, I mean, when I say that, they're going to ask for money. So uh, next year, Boys and Girls Club might ask for a little money. But, you know, uh, over in Owensboro, I think Owensboro and Davis County just has a line item in their budget every year. It's just always going to come out like ten or $15,000. They're always going to write that. Does this money, all this money stay in Ohio County? Oh, yes. Does it help over yes. No, no. It, it, every, every community, every club that operates under the Cliff Hagen umbrella operates individually. <coughs> what the Cliff Hagen umbrella helps us with is if we just started our own Boys and Girls Club, we have to have a Steve Winkler, who's the CEO of Cliff Hagen Boys and Girls Club. So all this administrative stuff, we just have to give them 6% of our budget every year to pay for that. Now, originally, when Butler County started, they had a unit director and a CEO. So it's like having, having a Steve Winkler over everything on top of it. So you're talking fifty or $60,000 full-time position on top of everything else you're doing. And, so. I, and I think, Dustin, if, if there are a number of, enough children and if additional monies that could be raised to show the national organization that you have that ability, you could possibly provide the programming year-round? Yes, that, that is ultimately the goal. The goal is to make this year-round, which means right now we operate only when school's in. If, if you're having school that day, we're open. If it snows out, we're not. But when school's over, we're done for the we're done for the summer. Now, if we get enough funding, because that that increases your budget, because you're going from 2:30 to 6:30 five days a week to 7 a.m. to 6:30 p.m. You know, you're running an extra 12 hours all through summer for a year-round uh, club, and that's what we want to do. I don't have no problem with it as long well as the whole like horse branch. And, like, oh yeah, horse and that, that's all. I really, I'll, I'll well, be Portsville honest with you. Own. I think Forsville kind of the service. I think maybe it's Forsville has its own. Does a pretty good program up in yeah. Forsville. This is kind of similar, but more on with so national. The way support. the way that the after school program worked, oh, I know at Wayland was it was fifty dollars a week. They're trying to have some. And uh, the treehouse yeah. program in Forsville, uh, Dunaway. I believe is sponsoring it. So if any kid wants to stay, you know, uh, wants to do the, they're, they're taken care of. Uh, I really think that the issue with the busing for Western and Horse Branch, I think the issue is with busing as a whole. It's it's a logistical problem, and you've got a lot of people that aren't driving buses anymore. Okay, because I was thinking, well, not to, yeah. not to knock on Larry, but I was thinking, well, if they're busing it from Fordsville, then it's not a distance problem. No, they're, they're, I, I don't think anyone comes got from Fordsville. Own. Fordsville's got its own thing. Because okay. I was thinking, uh, if it's not I, a distance been, problem, what, what can we do to get right. yeah, the school I system is short on bus drivers? Right. I, I, have, I have friends, I have several friends that uh, just want, and they get a schedule every week. Your bus is not coming for your kid. They, now, they don't live here. But in other places, and I know one that they said your bus is never coming. So uh, I think that's, I think it's just a logistical problem in terms of the busing, but we're, we have full intentions of getting it sorted out. That, yeah. that is for sure. Sounds good. Well, uh, and like I said, we have all talked about every one of these things before. And real quick, one thing, it, it, the, the Boys and Girls Club is one of those things. I know people say, oh, I'll just quit giving money to people that don't. This is for anybody. Anybody's income that work, the working, it, it's not just low income, it's it's every working class, everybody. And my, my reiteration would be that this money is what sets it for just these type of programs. Well, the what to give to us just this type of programs, the community part, the community part just for this type of And Judge, I understand, and we've talked about a lot of these, but now I'm just going to go ahead and reiterate. Uh, me and David Stevens is on committee and we've got to reach out to all the fire departments. We've reached out to some yeah. of them. But what we're looking at is, I'm just going to tell you what my recommendation is, is $50,000 for each fire department, the one that's already received the money that will come out of the 50 and for the cities too, because we've already helped 
some cities and we've hooked some fire departments. Well, I tell you so what, I'll bring that to the next uh, ARPA meeting and to the ex next I would, I would really meeting. like to go ahead and make a motion on that and put it on. But uh, you make a motion, I'll say. Add it to this resolution? Yeah. Okay, write it on there so the copy that. But they per, per fire department except for the ones that already received the funds. Well, but here, here's the thing, and I don't, I'm just going to be honest right up front before that because that you're talking a big chunk of money right now. We need to make sure that the funding, I know it will be here, but it might be the second round, which we get in the spring or something like that. You, you know, know what I'm saying? The, the, the issue is, and I, have no, I mean, it's not an issue. It's great that we're being able to help everybody, and everybody's coming up with with needs and everything, but I don't want to that to slide back to the back right. burner. No, I understand that. I know we can saying. put it that at the bottom, and that way, if it may not be paid as quickly as the others, we know it so needs to be put on the just, list. I didn't realize y'all made. Let's, what what did we do? We, do it? we just That's remember the meeting. I mean, the conversation we had at the very beginning about you know all the tornado relief and everything and that that's first line right there helping families it's and i'm not by any means saying don't do it i i'm I, well jason why I, don't we do it this way why don't we take it to and joe's motion can, uh, can say this whereas the next monies that come in there's uh fire departments and say they'll get to the number one and it problem. might be now, i don't know i just without and being here it I may not even have to wait I just, it, it may not have to wait you know what i'm saying yeah. before, we, it, before we do any this, more after this poll here is no it'll be on it'll be it'll be it'll be right, right there right below them on that one that's next okay if, if the motion and, and incorporated up. city so i'll, I'll make a motion on uh, who made it while ago who made the motion while ago i, I, I second the list and I made the most. Okay. Okay. Well, okay. Well, okay. Well, okay. We gotta go ahead and go with this. I it's okay, forgot. Sam. Yeah. I'll, I'll, Will you amend it to say what he said? I will amend my motion to adding the fire departments. fire departments to be the next item on the list. Okay. With Jason, will you let your second fire departments and cities? Then we're talking the incorporated cities, and which is how many? Four. Back in. About seven. Maybe some more. Well, like some that. of them already received, right? Yeah. Some of them up two, but up two if they have received the fifty. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Let's. Uh, if that, if that's. Uh, you got it, Miranda. All right. Do a roll call. Johnston. Yes. Cam. Yes. Morphew. Yes. Small. Yes. Bullock. Yes. Bullock. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Uh, Jody. Jody has requested us. Hey, sure. Is there anybody else in the crowd? I, I don't I don't think so. There's nothing else on the agenda. I know we're gonna have committee reports and if we get in here it just takes you a while would, longer. It won't take long. Jody economic she she says she's she gonna tell you about the prospect. Uh, motion would you want to make a motion? Oh, we're not. Motion by Larry. Do we need to go? I mean as far as volume we need to yes. second by uh, Joe. Yeah, I'll second. Okay. Let's go to his office. You know what? Oh, I make a motion. We'll go back in the second. open session. All in favor, sit down. Okay, that's right. Uh, gentlemen, we're down to committee reports. Okay, we got one right here. It's the uh, Larry Morphy. Is he coming? I mean, that's for me. Yeah, he, he's going to the restroom. Okay. You know, he's not on. Go ahead and start the uh, committee. Right. Wage committee. So we got two. The, uh, one would be our road foreman. He met the uh, requirements for the road manager, road scholar. We've got the documentation right here from the University of Kentucky. So I would ask to move cool. him on up uh, to the. What left? L3. L3. Is that right? L2, L2, L2 to L3. You have to, uh, I'm looking at it here. It's right there. Yeah, yeah. 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 looking over. It. You have a form to do that with. Do I? You have a form to fill that up. Yeah, the form. Okay. You got the form's it. right here. Okay. I think everybody's got a form yeah. in front of it. Okay, so. Yeah, as long as I get a signed copy, we're good. So, is that done in motion? Uh, no, I, I just uh, I just repeat it. Yeah. Go ahead and explain the next one if you want to. Go ahead and explain them, and I'll just put okay what you say though, because no need to have the committee. We're not going to do what you say. And then the second one is uh, one of our road workers, Willie Sutherland. He has uh, accomplished uh, 
Class B CDLs and uh, a couple other things. It was not updated on the wage scale, and it was updated on 9 19 20, 21. And so we need to change the rate of pay to uh, from 1652 to 1690. 1690. We've got, we got a sheet right back here in the back. Shows where all of this. Okay. Is all of this effective this last Monday? Last effective the. Uh, effective, like, will it yeah, go back date till 919 because yeah. that was the wage scale. And he's had his class B apparently for a while. Okay. Nick's is 1114. It, it's all. Uh, and Nick was 1114, yeah. yes. But the 919, what it was, is we had a couple of people come to us and was saying there were some things that they didn't think was quite right in the wage scales, and we was trying to get all that adjusted. And we said, whatever. When we look back at it and everything, we would we would make it right because they had already accomplished those okay. those things. So it just we'll it. just needed to be updated. Okay. We'll take care of it right now. You want that inform? You make a motion? No, I'll have to read it off and roll call it. So. Just read up what you said. Uh, Nick Woolen, upon completion of his thing, we're going to have ask change his rate of pay to ten thirty six thirty seven. Effective 11-14. Roll call. Johnson? Yes. Count? Yes. Morphew? Yes. Small? Yeah. Bullock? Yes. Mark? Yeah. Uh, upon the uh, recommendation of the road committee and upon uh, Willie uh, Sutherland uh, producing uh, that he was eligible for the uh, uh, operator's uh, <coughs> increase, from 1652 to 1690. Uh, roll call that. Johnson? Yes. Count? Yes. Morgan? Yes. Small? Yeah. Bullock? Yes. Barnes? Yes. And I just want to go ahead and say, uh, you know, I think that's a great thing that there are people going on and getting further things. Sorry that's, that we, that's didn't, wonderful. we didn't get that updated right. like as, right. as soon as we should. And we just need to be vigilant on making sure that we're. Uh, down and Okay, any other committee reports? I wasn't addressed to you, I'm just saying that as a whole. You know, I did, I did. Is there any other committee report? Uh, do you, uh, it's very, very complicated, and we've been working on that yesterday and today, and uh, Justin and I have. Uh, if you would. Bear with us, we'd like to get with you on it and then we'll make let you make the report for that. I mean, uh, Justin was going to revise the uh, yeah, and we're still got Edmondson County sign on it, but we hope they will in the event. Okay, in time. okay. Now, I know we had our meeting and everything went well, and there were some uh, issues that we, Justin has addressed, and so everything that's right, you were there, that's right. Yeah. So, so we okay. hope, the hope that it is. We hope it cuts. Yeah. I, I think it will be after discussion, after just revised the, uh, the issue. I, I think everything will come down the pipe. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> we've been, we've been, we've been, we've been we've battling out there. We've seen it, so we'll see if they'll be ready. Okay. Um, hand this one over to uh, Chet. Chet Cassidy. <laughs> Any other committee reports? Any other committee report? Being nine, let's go to the magistrates. Let's go to Sam's mom. Uh, I want to reiterate that uh, be careful on county roads. If they've had damage, they're going to be road close signs up. It's illegal to go around. They do have guards posted. Uh, so please be aware of them and be careful. Uh, second of all, I want to throw a kudos out to my second job is Purdue Farms. Uh, they cooked over 200 meals, and or I was part of it, the Purdue team cooked over 200 meals and uh, delivered them today to the affected people and the first responders in the community, uh, which is awesome. Uh, you know, you finally get to see some people and, and you get to get out there, you know. Uh, Purdue's tried to do everything they can to help donate, whether it's chicken or whether it's, you know, uh, whatever. But, uh, you know, uh, there's, but Purdue's not the only one. Purdue's just one I was with today. You know, everybody's coming together, and I just want to. Uh, it, it's remarkable. 
uh, thank everybody for what they have done. And I think that'll be it for me. James. Well, I, I just want to say to you real quick, and community send our thoughts and prayers. Um, uh, kudos to everybody that went out, like uh, EMS and fire departments and our, all our police and Charlie. And, you know, it's been a rough, rough time, and we appreciate all the extra help they had. Did and, and just the community as a whole, how they've come through and rallied. So, yeah. you know, I thank you. Uh, I thank you for them. Thank you for all your help. Uh, like I said, you're in our thoughts and prayers. And not only Ohio County, the western part of the state, and Newark County, and all our neighbors. You know, just, they're in our thoughts and prayers. And they even lost loved ones. So just, uh, you know, we're thanking you guys. Thank you, thank you. And, uh, Jeff. Yep, same thing. I mean, it's devastating loss for our communities and I uh, can't imagine the ones that's lost their homes and Leslie, their, their loved ones and friends and family from our neighbor counties. Uh, just remember my thoughts and prayers and anything we can do uh, on the county end, we'd be glad to. We've got a lot of good people that uh, reached out to some of them in the center town. <clears throat> they really didn't need much but just some time to clean up and everything but you know I know everybody as time goes on and get a week or two into this, more people will need more help. You know, yeah. right now they're just happy that you know they didn't lose no loved ones. Right. But uh, we just need to remember them. And anything we can do, just yeah, sure. you know, reach out to us and we'll we'll see what we can get done. That's a good deal. Uh, there's a resource uh, center at the at the uh, park set up in the buildings out there yeah. where they've taken in goods and we'll give them to anybody that needs them. And uh, Georgina Midkiff has kind of stepped up and sort of the head of that. However, she's not the only one. There's a bunch of volunteers there helping, and they've just been wonderful. They've stayed there long hours, and uh, they've been more receiving the goods than they have handing them out. But I think that is going to reverse itself, and we will be able to help a lot of people with it. One more thing. So far, it's been receiving it. To re reiterate. delivering it to the individual families today as well, collecting them. Okay, they have been delivered today. That's good, but anyway, that's just wonderful that that resource is there. And to reiterate what Sam said, you know, we're not trying to keep people from seeing what's going on or try to help their friends and family, but at the same time, you know, I was out on, on Saturday on, on the mines loader, even went down Matanzas Road trying to open it up, and I know people, you know, they're trying to get through and everything, but it does make it hard to get your work done when you've got people that you're also worried about their safety and, you know, that debris when you're when you're moving stuff with equipment or even cutting it with trees and everything you snap back and we just don't want anybody else to get hurt and we also don't want to slow the process down for our responders and then also it's just like Sam said the security or you know we're also trying to make sure everything's secure so we don't have any looting or uh, because uh, unfortunately sometimes that's any more looting. Yeah. Larry, yeah. Larry Morphew and I were out, look, we, we saw what you talked about there yeah. with people going. We had three-way traffic on a one-lane road. Yeah. And so, you know, anything we can do to help our first responders and our road, road departments and all our fire departments trying to deal with this tragedy, that's, that's right. Larry. Oh, I don't want to sound redundant, but I just want to echo what my fellow magistrates have said and uh, good thoughts and we all get through this. Larry Murphy. Yeah, I just want to thank our volunteer department. Fire departments, it's just like it says, it's volunteer. And they put in a lot of time and effort to be helping the people. And I'm just thankful for them and, and the police and the EMS. Yeah, every, every, and, uh, every and even uh, there's been some people, citizens that's volunteered and went out and. Uh, Absolutely. Many of them. Yeah. Many of them. Their resources and everything. Uh, it's almost it's it's been a, a good problem to have or a good issue to have, but matching so many people wanting the help with the ones that need the help to get that focus together. It's been of course we did get that fund set up today that we talked about earlier for the That's cash good. donations. That's a good thing. And uh, and we do have that resource center at the park, and then we have been able to match some people up directly. But we would urge anybody that have needs to let us know. Um, and uh, like I said, it just again it shows what a wonderful community we live in. Um, and I wanna I want to thank all you gentlemen. Uh, we've got a lot of work done for this community because we're all 
kind of pulling on the same plow, and uh, and so we've really done we've really doing good there. Uh, so uh, with that, has anybody got anything for the good of the body in the public? Got anything for the good of the body? Yes, sir. I'd like to speak just for a minute. And Thank you, everyone, and I'm just, uh, I'm lucky to be alive, and I just want to give a report from our end of the county. I was a quarter mile from that thing, no basement, and I was never so scared in my life. And I don't know if you're familiar, but Frank Maiden lost all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Nine, nine, I mean, it's, you want to cry, you want to cry. We had two gentlemen here tonight that lost everything. Uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, I had no property damage, and while it was going on, I actually live over on Silver Beach Road, and my wife, I was on the phone with my wife, and we were, she was a quarter mile from it, and it's, I mean, it's, it's just unbelievable, anything like this could happen, it could be worse, but I don't, I don't know how, I don't know how, now it, it did get me because that tornado went right over my log jam and 800, 800 feet down the river. So my log jam has been multiplied by 10 times. And it not, but then it left the river and crossed Rocky Fork Creek. And Rocky Fork, I've got I, probably 3,000 feet on Rocky Fork Creek. That's my border. My border is Rough River and Rocky Fork Creek. Rocky Fork Creek is full of trees. It, it's you, you wouldn't believe it. You wouldn't. You, you would not believe it. So of course that's going to affect that little bridge on Shree Road. But I mean it. It hit the Shree Road community bad in uh, 919. But well, it's small, small compared to what happened to other people. You know, I talked to you last week before all this happened, and uh, things still maybe look good, and they may look better for my river cleanup now. But uh, I was Raymond Hagen. I talked to Raymond Hagen after I talked to you, and he said uh, that we've got a little glitch with a lady in uh, FEMA in Kentucky. He said it's all clear. He sent her everything. It can be done. It has been done, but it's still being held up. But I can see that river being completely closed now. In fact, below my log jam, when that, I went down there Saturday morning after that tornado, my son and I, and the river was solid, solid with debris. You saw no water, no water. And it's stopping up past my log jam. So, but when this water goes down, that I, I don't know what's gonna happen. And plus all that stuff from that creek well, I, I can't see us being able to put a crop in this year because we got no drainage, but we'll work through it. But thank you, thank you guys, and like you say, thank all the first responders and everything because it, it, it just breaks your heart what happened. We'll keep it on. Anyone else got anything for the good of the crew? I did, yeah. You know, I just want to say that uh, whenever tragedy strikes, you know what kind of community you live in. 2011, there was a tornado that went through West Liberty, Kentucky. Destroyed the entire town. Took out my home. I've lived through it. I know what it's like. And people came together to help me, help our community. In return, our community back in Eastern Kentucky has contacted me and there's truckloads that came in today. Um, I went on over there, Sam was over there. Um, from Eastern Kentucky where they want to give back to the people who help them. There's more truckloads coming in from there tomorrow. They've not been contacted by people that's bringing in tomorrow. There's a load of toys for kids for Christmas that is coming in Saturday. There's a lot of things happening. But I also want to say that before this tragedy even happened here in Ohio County and the surrounding area, you can ask my wife, we've said, we have moved into the best community that we could have ever lived in in our lives. We love this community. We love you all and everyone else. This is the most fabulous community that I've ever seen. And I can, I can thank that, not just to the people in this community, but the leadership of this community. 
And I thank you all for what all you do and the opportunities you provided for me, my family, and my grandkids and so forth that live here. I just want to thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, okay, gentlemen, we will stand the turn. I think we covered a lot of stuff tonight. Yes, we did.